as someone who's used desire experiments for a long time, um, I also realize there's limitations to it. And how do those limitations get resolved? Or what are they and how can we work with them? I think a, uh, so the, in the world of chaos, there's a lot of things that can be going on. I've been doing a lot of research on that. I want to share some of the findings here, just at a high level, so you kind of know some things that you might need to consider. Um, back when I was teaching at the college um, part-time, I had multiple students talk about neural networks or neural net cell column. And the idea is it mimics the way the brain works and just a lot of connections, a lot of inputs to a lot of them, outputs and just kind of how all that whole web ties together. And I think it's a great tool. It can use anything you want for inputs. And the way the paper was written is, you know, just if you have scientific knowledge, that's part of the neural net, but if there's areas where you don't have the understanding and the science behind it, you can use desired experiments to create those equations, put in the neural net, and then let it uh, fire away from there. But one of the things DOE has always done poorly with is step functions. Uh, if in the basic one would be thinking about uh, the freezing of water, you know, below a given temperature it freezes, you get that temperature, weird things happen, and then it does something else out here when it's liquid again. Um, Design experiments tends to work with smooth functions, so a step function is really hard. A neural network can just be a conditional. If it's here, we use this equation. If it's there, we use that equation. The neural net helps deal with that. You can deal with it kind of intuitively, intuitively offline with DOE, but basically you could have DOE for each side of that equation. The neural net just describes which equation to be using. Also, things that are cyclic, um, again, continuous curves design experiment works well on, but if it's something that is cycling in some way or a sine function, um, you know, that's not something design experiment does. Narrowing your scope can help, um, but you can put other functions like a sine wave into a neural net because it can deal with any kind of function. So if you have science or some understanding that these cycles are taking place, that can be part of it. Additionally, feedback loops. Uh, desire experiments can kind of deal with them if you set them up well, but neural nets for sure could. You know, if this output affects that input over time uh, and then affects this other output, you, know, you can get those feedback loops into it as well. And I think that's important. Uh, how do you deal with the feedback? Or how do you deal with other inputs? Um, you know, maybe the slope of it matters. It's not the value that you're at as an input, but did the, was the slope this? Or is the slope that? You know, if it's a very slight slope, that might have a different uh, rate impact. Um, you know, think about ma material failure or something like that. It's moving very slowly versus, you know, a more aggressive movement on uh, that. That slope uh, could impact performance of your system. And I've dealt with inputting slopes into DOEs before. So that it can be possible there, but in the world of chaos, it's not just the input value. It might be uh, the rate of change of that input value as well. Also, a big thing in chaos is what's the nearest neighbor doing? If the nearest neighbor flipped, if it melted, if it froze, uh, that nearest neighbor can have influence on a surrounding area and how things can just um, basically snap your fingers, change state. So using the nearest neighbor, which in neural nets or however you may set it up, uh, could be used as well. Obviously things with chaos, uh, the more variability you have um, is an indication at least of instability. Um, so standard deviation is something I've put into design experiments on their own. Um, you may not be able to predict chaos per se, but if you're looking to minimize standard deviation, that should show you an area that um, has more of a chance of not being in a chaotic state uh, where it's, it's flipping back and forth in, in pure chaos theory. So standard deviation is a way to try and monitor that, but also standard deviation can be part of your neural net to know that what that uncertainty might, might look like, be one of your outputs that you're considering. Another thing I've done in, I don't know if it's a chaotic system by definition, but something that was very challenging to design for, we actually developed something, and I could have added the word uh, factor here, um, but I created, as I worked on this, 
we created a stability factor. Uh, and the stability factor was a, a, just a, a simple calculation on the outputs. And if the output was, um, basically translated the output. So if the output was in a given region, um, using this little conversion, um, we were okay. But if it became a different level, uh, we had an issue. And really what it was, was a, a simple scale. Um, and this stability factor, if there was one, it really became chaotic. Uh, and if it was higher, you know, much further away, way up here, that's where we tend to be stable. But you could also look at, did the curve transition like this between chaos and stable? Or did it change more abruptly? Maybe not quite that abrupt, but the idea is, um, if, it, if it's a non-graceful change from, from stable to chaotic, that, that's, um, that's uh, an issue. So we had a stability factor. We just looked at that. You could also look at the, the knee of the curve at the transition point. You could look at that derivative or that slope as well uh, and see how that's, that's changing. Um, but just some ideas, uh, again, as, as engineers, as scientists, we want to develop stable systems, but sometimes they operate in these chaotic systems. It'd be nice to understand the chaos, but what we really want to do to have predictable, reliable products is to stay away from chaos. So how can we do that? Uh, some of these things create some of the chaos, some of the uncertainty, and can drive performance. And just thinking about how we can plug all those together uh, into a system with design experiments potentially being a piece of it as well. That's sometimes what's required for really aggressive systems. Most systems uh, obviously don't need all of these things to be going simultaneous, but a, a, if a good DOE can't do it by itself, DOE with a neural net, or you know, some of these other consider considerations might get you there. Again, the stability factor is something is a pure design experiments using slope issues, uh, slope inputs, and standard deviations, we're able to look at that stability factor, make the decisions, and understand rules of thumb of how to make a stable, reliable system. If you would like help avoiding chaos, creating a stable, reliable, robust product, call Superior Solutions. We're aware of these techniques and many more that can help you be in that stable region, have a predictable product, will be a success in the market. Give us a call, Paris Solutions. We'd love to help you figure it out as well.